<laughs> hey internet, it's Alex R on Fight Games. And uh, in this video, I'm just gonna do a quick uh, recap of uh, EVO 2024. I'm gonna react to uh, what happened. Uh, you know, tell you about uh, my experience going. I, I just got back uh, yesterday. It was a lovely time. So, um, you know, EVO's great. Uh, EVO's a whole thing. It happens every year. Uh, it's, it's all comers. It's the biggest fighting game event. Uh, this particular one that just happened was the biggest fighting game tournament, and in fact, the biggest esports tournament that had ever happened. Um, it's pretty corporate. You know, it's a, uh, it's owned by Sony, you know, and Pokimane. Uh, and it's, you know, a big corporate thing. But you know what? Like, a lot of the things that we like do come from big companies, and it's a whole thing. So it's really, really fun, though. Um, there's just a zillion people there. Everybody loves fighting games. You know, everybody's there to have a good time, even if it is, you know, sponsored by giant companies. And, you know, like, can you have fun at a corporate sponsored thing? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, I don't know, if a giant company is watching this right now and you want to sponsor me as a fighting game player, uh, I don't know. Let's talk. Shoot. Will I wear a Red Bull shirt? Maybe. I don't know. Um, so it's, you know, it's like a... It's a giant tournament, but there's also so much other fun stuff happening other than the tournament. Um, you know, Evo, it's it's a whole thing. It's cool. Uh, so my personal competitive run, I had a pretty good one. Um, I got out of pools. Uh, you know, I entered Tekken 8. Um, my initial thoughts on Tekken 8, you know, I, I didn't love it out of the gate, um, but I think it's it's a much better game now. Um, so I entered Tekken 8, um, and actually, I usually enter two games when I go, sometimes three when I go to a major, but this time I just entered Tekken 8, but I had a pretty good run. Uh, I got out of my pool on winter side, I was very happy about that. Uh, I didn't get out of round two, I didn't expect to get out of round two, I mean, I've never gotten out of round two at a major, um, but I did a little bit of damage in the second round, I, uh, I went one and two in, uh, in my second pool, uh, you know, which is good enough to get a get my uh, burrito card. So, uh, yeah, you know, I came in three hundred and eighty fifth place out of like four and a half thousand people. So it's top ten percent, not bad. Could have, uh, yeah, pretty happy about that. Uh, I got beat up by, I lost a close set to a Yoshi that I felt I could have potentially won. And I just got bodied by a victor, uh, and then I was out. I need to learn the victor matchup better. Uh, but yeah, I played Kazuya the whole time. Uh, Kazuya's in a good spot. Best spot he's been in for a while uh, for as a tournament character. Um, and I did okay. I, I mean, pretty good, honestly. So that was that was the whole thing. Uh, here's me with uh, with Keisuke, and then you know a Kazuya Mishima cosplayer, or possibly Kazuya Mishima. Him at, Kazuya Mishima himself, that is, uh, you know, the guy himself, that's Keisuke, uh, who's right now the, the top Kazuya player in the world. So you don't have to be good to go to EVO. You can go to EVO, you know, I've said this about majors for a while, but to go to a giant tournament, you do not have to be good. And that's like the one of the most beautiful things about the fighting game community is that almost all of the events that matter, you don't have to qualify. Um, you are good enough already. Like, if you don't know how to play the game, you're still good enough. If you do know how to play the game, you've got a leg up on a lot of the people who are there. The median player there is honestly not very good. Um, the competition at most locals is probably a lot stiffer than the competition that you're gonna see, at least in the original pools at EVO, you know? Like, the best players are there, but also all the players are there, right? And a lot of people, you know, they just go just because it's fun. Um, you know, and for me, like, I, I tend to enter a side game that I'm not very good at. Um, like, a uh, year or two ago, I entered uh, Strive uh, at EVO, and I had a great time. You know, I won, like, one set of Strive, and I was elated. That was amazing. Uh, but yeah. Or um, at Combo Breaker, just recently, I entered Killer Instinct, and I got demolished. I didn't win, I don't think I won, I might have won a round of Killer Instinct, but I, I got just 
destroyed. But you know what? It was fun. So, if you lose, you lose. You know, 25% of everybody, This is that's just the math, 25% of everybody goes 0-2. Uh, and then another 25% of everybody goes 1-2. and two. So, like, if you break even, if you go 2-2 two and two at a major, you're in the top half of everybody who went. And that's, I mean, that's just math. Like, that, the tournament has to be shaped that way. Um, so really, like, unless you're in it to, like, go super deep, it's really a social event for the most part. So if you know people, come with people you know. Like, I'm, like, super lucky. I know, you know, the NorCal tech -in people. So I try to go with them. And it's good to hang out with the, you know, shout outs to NorCal tech -in if you happen to be watching this. Um, it's always good to see y'all. I should come to locals more. Sorry. Uh, or if you can meet online friends there, that's awesome too. You know, if you've got like Discord buddies or whoever, like people that you know, even if you've never met them in person, if you can see them at Evo, that's fantastic, you know? So it's a social event. And even if you don't know people, you can meet people. People are really friendly. You know, you can make friends while you're there. So. It's ultimately, it's a social thing. Uh, right on. So there's a lot of cosplayers. Here's a, a, a Valentine, is that Ram? That's Ram with all, and Alex and Ed. This is cute. So new venue is like pretty good. It was in the Las Vegas Convention Center. Previously it had been in um, 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 Mandalay Bay Convention Center. And Mandalay Bay Convention Center was pretty good uh, for a lot of reasons. But I think the LVCC is probably an upgrade. Um, one thing that they were able to do, they had it open for all three days and that was so good. Um, before the Saturday night where they were shutting everything down was like kind of sad. Uh, you know, it was like this like kind of uh, wistful, you know, bittersweet situation. You've only been there for two days and on the second day, you know, in the evening, they start setting it, they start shutting it down. But um, having it open on the Sunday too was amazing. It was so nice. You got like a whole extra day. And almost everybody was eliminated at that point, right? You know, if you're if you're still in the tournament, you're in freaking top six at that point. So like, and that's almost nobody. So <laughs> getting it, having a whole day where all you can plausibly do is just like mill around, play casual sets, you know, buy stuff. Uh, you know, look at the art, look at the cosplay. This is great. It's wonderful. And they didn't shut everything down until Sunday night. I, I had left even by that point. So uh, there was just a lot of space and it was like pretty easy to get casual matches. Um, and there's a food court right there uh, in the convention center, right next to the venue. Um, like I'm a vegetarian and I was able to get like pretty good food um, right there. There was like a Dunkin' Donuts and they had coffee and uh, I had like some, there was like a kind of Pan-Asian cuisine place and I got like tofu and rice and uh, vegetables. It was, it was good. It was good. Um, so yeah, convention, like the LVCC space is like pretty nice. Um, what they should have had was they should have had water dispensers on the convention floor. You had to like leave the convention floor, like go out into the food court area to refill your water, um, which wasn't great, but it was okay. Like it wasn't like there was no water. It was just like you had to walk a little bit to get the water. Um, one like real downside, two real downsides I want to talk about. Um, the finals area was not nearly big enough. There was a, just an immense line to get into the finals area for the last couple of games. Uh, I wanted to watch Tekken finals in the arena, but there just was not space. And I wasn't gonna wait in that line. So like, you know, there's like upsides and downsides to that. like. Instead of sitting and watching the finals and not playing Tekken, what I did instead was I was mostly like playing casuals while the finals were happening, which was great because there was a bunch of like dedicated Tekken players who like wanted to play more casuals. So that was cool. Um, another downside is that the venue is not attached. So like the venue before it was in Mandalay Bay, which meant that kind of the, the default place to stay was the Mandalay Bay Hotel. Uh, or then, and then there's like a bunch of other hotels that are like attached to Mandalay Bay. So you don't even have to go outside uh, in the Vegas heat in the summer. Like it was a, literally over 110 degrees. So you do not want to be outside. 
Uh, but before, you know, you could like stay in Luxor and walk to Mandalay Bay and you would be completely inside the whole time and that was like fine. Or Excalibur if you want, which is like also attached. There's like tunnels that go between the hotels, which is nice. So what that meant was if you wanted to play like Salty Sweet, you know, after hours sets, like, so like, like NorCal Tech In would like, you know, set up in hotel rooms and, and play. Uh, and that was fun and you could walk uh, to other people's hotels, even if you weren't staying in the same hotel. Uh, but that wasn't like super possible. I, maybe I'm just like not in the in crowd, but I didn't get invited to a salty suite, uh, which I'm kind of salty about to be totally honest, but it's okay. I was tired anyway. And I played a lot of casual sets in the venue, so that was, that was good. Like quite a few casual sets. It was really quite nice. Uh, oh yeah, here's Scorpion. Uh, she was cute. She came up behind me. She tried to scare me. I was playing casuals and she came up behind me and I was like, oh, hi, how's it going? And she was like, I was, I was trying to frighten you and, uh, you know, cute. So, um, you sh when you go to a major, you should play a bunch of casual matches. Um, just like go up, if people are playing, say like, hey, can I get next? Like, and that's the etiquette. You got to say, can I get next? And then they'll say, yeah, you can get next. We're, we'll finish the set and then you're in the rotation. So you get in, you put up your quarter metaphorically, right? You can get next. Um, and you should, you should do that because that's how you're gonna get better uh, is by playing offline with a lot of different people. Um, and like Evo this year, it was so good for that. Like much better than previous years. I was really impressed. Um, also better than like Combo Breaker, better than most tournaments I'd been at. I was. I was really happy how uh, how straightforward it was to get matches. It was great. Uh, here's JP. Hi, JP. This guy. This yeah, nice cosplay. I took some cosplay pictures. Uh, arcade space was great. Um, I played like so many games. Uh, I played like games I'd never played before. I played old Tekkens. Um, I tried. What did I try? I tried like air guys. Air guys. God bless the ring. I played that, that was fun. Um, they, there's like just a zillion sit down, you know, Japanese candy cabs and like Vulex cabs. It was amazing, it was it was quite nice. And they've got like weird like rhythm games and they had, um, what was that one? Um, Sonic Blast Man, the one where you put on a boxing glove and like punch the, punch the pad. Uh, that was amazing. Like I, I, I remember those from when I was a kid, but apparently those are like mostly banned in the West, because uh, it's dangerous. It's like bad for your hand. But they had it. I didn't play it. Uh, yeah. So here's how to play Tekken. Do an electric, right? This is on the the Tekken One cabinet. I played Tekken One. It was funny. Um. There's like commercial booths for all kinds of stuff. And like, honestly, that's fun, right? Like if it's booths for things that you like, like go to that booth, right? Like I tried indie games. Um, I met the developer of Dojo Masters, which is the indie game that just came out. Um, I bought that game. Uh, so shout outs to that guy. Like I met him and he was nice and the game is fun. Uh, so I bought the game. It was like, it's like $10 or $12 or something on Steam. Uh, I tried the new MVC collection at the Capcom booth. Um, so I, I've never been a Marvel player really, but like, I don't know, I might get it. It was fun. Um, I tried Lydia at the, um, the Bamco booth. That was nice. Um, kind of excited about Lydia. Lydia's looking fun. Um, you know, and I love like, you know, stick hardware. Like I touched a bunch of joysticks and buttons and stuff. Oh my God. And I tried the, um, that Quanba desk, uh, I, um, I got myself a birthday present. I actually bought a Quanba desk. I don't, do I need a Quanba desk? I think the answer is actually yes. I think I do need a Quanba desk um, and I bought one for myself. Um, <laughs> uh, the, and my justification for it is uh, it's gonna prevent me from like actually buying an arcade cabinet because I, I deeply want an arcade cabinet but I don't need one. So I just got the Quanba desk. Uh, and you know, they, they, sometimes they were handing out free Red Bulls at the Red Bull place. If y'all want an esports athlete, <laughs> sponsorships are, uh, I'm not currently sponsored, shockingly. 
Uh, here's Gold Lewis. That's so cute. This is a great cosplay. Uh, so yeah, and, and the other thing at EVO is they make all the announcements. It's funny, I think it's actually easier to follow the announcements if you're not at EVO. Um, if you're not there, but you're like watching from home, you have a better macro scale sense of what's happening. But like, uh, you know, if you're there, you're kind of in the thick of it. You know, you're playing games. You're like not necessarily paying attention to like what's being announced. Um, but yeah, so Vice and Mature are coming to King of Fighters 15. So that's very nice. Um, shout out to Corey, you know, the world's biggest uh, uh, Vice enthusiast. So shout out to Vice's assistant. Uh, they're re-releasing SVC Chaos. Uh, I like that game, actually. Like, I've, I've dabbled. I wouldn't say dabbled with it. I've played it a couple of times. It's fun. Um, nice that they're re-releasing it. Bunch of other announcements happened. Oh my god, hey Hachi. That's the thing. That's, like, like, as a Tekken person, uh, that was very surprising to me. Um... And honestly, I have mixed feelings about it. Uh, so step, like, two things I'm really happy about. Uh, three things I'm really happy about. Uh, I'm really happy that the data mines... So, like, people had been saying, like, oh, it's definitely Fakram Ram and Craig. And I'm, gl I'm glad it's not Fakram Ram and Craig. Like, I like Marduk okay, but, like, Fakram Ram I don't love, to be totally honest. And um, they're both really divisive characters. Like, nobody likes fighting against... That's not true. Some people like fighting against Craig Murdoch, but he's pretty oppressive and like, the tackle is kind of unfun. Like either you break it or you don't. Uh, so I'm really impressed with Bamco for like, not accidentally leaking that character, which is neat. Like they kind of, they've become aware that like computers are a real thing and people are gonna like sift through the, you know, the game's data. <laughs> like they're aware that data mining is happening and they didn't accidentally leak this, which is impressive. Nice work, Bamco. Um, so that's good. Uh, and I'm excited to play Heihachi. Like, you know, I'm a Mishima player and I love playing Mishimas. I played a lot of Heihachi in seven and, and you know, all the previous games too. Like I like Heihachi a lot. Um, I'm a little bit sad from, like, a story perspective. Like, apparently he's, like, being magically resurrected by monks or something, which is cool, I guess, but... Like, it's a little... It's it's sad for Kazuya, you know? Like, you would have hoped that he would have gotten, you know, like, the closure on, like, you know, he finally did it. Uh, he's not gonna be very happy, so... I hope he, uh... I don't know. I'm interested to see how the story goes. Uh... But yeah, I'm excited to play him. You know, I, I'm a Mishima player, I love. Uh, he's probably my second favorite character to play uh, after Kazuya. And you know, Reina is cool too, but like Reina is not Heihachi. She's really actually quite different. Uh, yeah, yeah, so mostly pop, I'm, I'm excited for Heihachi. You know, that's cool. Uh, all right, oh yeah, yeah, the cabinets. Cabinets are cool. I guess, is this guy like a straw hat? I don't really know animes. Uh, in conclusion, um, Evo's cool. Uh, I had a lovely time at Evo. Uh, I came back real energized. I want to play more fighting games. I want to get good at playing on stick. Um, I wished I played better on the cabinets. Uh, so I'm going to practice stick more. You know, I'm mostly a hitbox player. Uh, yeah, I want to... So, But I'm like pumped up and I want to like get better at Tekken, get better at fighting games in general. Um, I want to go to my locals more. You know, I missed I missed the NorCal Tekken people. I don't see them all that often. Um, mostly because I'm lazy and don't, don't, you know, drive there. It's an hour. It's like an hour at night and I'm old. Uh, but yeah. So in conclusion, um, Evo's sick and uh, you should go if you think you want to go. Um, you're good enough, you know, uh, meet people. You know, just say hi to people. Uh, Say hi to famous people, be cool about it. Say hi to people you don't know. Say hi to everybody. Uh, yeah, so that's all. Uh, I had a great time. Uh, yeah, uh, take care, play fighting games. See ya.